Welcome to the Celebrating Women podcast, co-hosted by Mandy Montana and Ashley Fisher, a podcast that celebrates women, their issues, their thoughts, their lives, conversations that celebrate their gifts, their talents, their courage. It's the Celebrating Women podcast. Presented by Hand and Stone Massage and Facial Spa in Tyler, Texas. Hey, it's Mandy Montana. You know I love my friends at Hand in Stone Massage and Facial Spa in Tyler, and they are helping us out with some very important daily skincare routine tips. I have the lead esthetician, Chelsea Everett, here with me. Chelsea, what are a few things that we can do daily to help take the best care of our skin? General sunscreen that you wear, you do want to reapply it about every two to four hours. But just making sure that you're reapplying it is one of the most important things. It's not really a just one and done, go on about your day. You, your skin secretes oils, like you're touching your face, you're sweating, it comes off after you know that short period of time. So it's super important to make sure that you're reapplying. Again, not only for preventative aging, but skin cancer is so crucial. And of course, we can help our skin look and feel its best by coming in to see you at Hand in Stone here in Tyler. Make your appointment today. Stop by the spa in the Cumberland Shopping Center or make your appointment online at handandstonetyler.com. All right. Welcome back to the Celebrating Women podcast. I am Ashley Fisher. I'm Mandy Montana. And Ashley and I are here by ourselves for a moment today. Mm-hmm. Having a little chat. A little chat. A little morning. Our chat. last little chat was celebrating our first year anniversary. And if you listen to that episode, wow, <laughs> we covered a lot. <laughs> but we were giggling about it this morning because we did cover a lot in the last year. And it, it, it was a reflection of that, I should say. And we ended with pop culture last time. And we're both such big fans. I mean, we do, we are careful about what we consume, Mm -hmm. but we have certain things that we really enjoy or that make us feel good. Mm -hmm. And Ashley and I both are really careful and avoid things that might make us feel yucky, yucky, Mm -hmm. or tense or anxious. (laughs) Yucky. (laughs) Yucky is a good word for it. Um, We kind of touched on it a little bit, but. In high school, I really liked scary movies Mm -hmm. and liked that adrenaline rush and kind of the way it made me feel and exciting. And I liked to like pick on my friends and jump scare them and stuff Mm -hmm. around those kinds of movies. And I I thought I was real funny. Now, I would not find that very funny at all if someone did that to me. (laughs) (laughs) Wisdom, maturity, Uh you know. Now I'm really... I'm really attracted to the things that I like to watch that like give me joy and comfort are often comedies Mm -hmm. or things that have some kind of happy ending. Like Mm -hmm. I just don't, I mean, I can appreciate a good drama, yeah, but things that have a lot of intensity or violence, Mm -hmm. I just tend to steer clear from. Yeah, I do too, because it, I've learned, you know, over the years that, and I tell this to my kids, it matters what you let in your eyes in your ears. Mm -hmm. It impacts the way you think. You know, some kid in Noah's class started talking about Pennywise the clown. Why in the world a first grader is is talking about Pennywise? I have no idea, but Noah will get up sometimes at night now and say, I'm thinking about Pennywise. And I don't even think he knows what Pennywise looks like, but it just has, it has an an impact, you Mm -hmm. know? And I've said it before, but like in high school, what finally did it for me was my girlfriends and I watched Final Destination Mm -hmm. and the needless like pain and violence in those movies it was just the thing that like flipped the switch for me I was like I am not doing this to myself anymore Mm because it just made me feel so heavy and like ugh. and so I've just since then, I've tried, doesn't mean I've never watched a horror movie, because I have. I've gone to see the new It movies with one of my friends, Scott. It's like our thing, you know, like, and I've actually enjoyed them, not the violence part. And I can't watch the part in the beginning with the the boy, Danny, that really bothered me. But there's this whole like mixture of like good and evil tied into those new movies. That's really interesting to me. Anyway, I digress. But well, Stephen King's a remarkable yeah. Extraordinary storyteller. Yes. I can I can relate to that. And like I've seen, I really appreciated the book and, and the movie Carrie. Mm-hmm. Again, for kind of those same things. It's like her vulnerability and her courage. And also I like a little bit of a supernatural twist and things. Like I find that interesting just to think about. Mm-hmm. But also how if you treat somebody really badly badly Mm -hmm. it can trigger things within them and you don't know what's going on at home (laughs) and what kind of abuse they're experiencing then if you you know 
trigger somebody. They could go off the rails. Like mm-hmm. how the importance of being kind. Yeah. <laughs> I learned from Carrie that it's, it's cool to be kind. <laughs> I'm, it's a little bit of a stretch. And, and it's not it's wrong. True. So yeah. Yeah. But the things that like I've stuck to, there are, there are a few shows and maybe one, maybe two movies that have stuck with me that I just, if I need like something going on in the background, mm-hmm. which I try not to need something on in the background. Like, I think that's a yeah. thing that could also be another episode is like, you know, this constant need for noise. I mm-hmm. don't ascribe to that. I think that's really unhealthy. I think you have to have quiet. But sometimes when you're cleaning house or you're doing whatever, it just feels good to have a feel good movie on in mm-hmm. the background. Yep. So what is that movie for you? Oh, I've got several. Lately, it's been Barbie. Mm -hmm. That's just like current. But La La Land is a big one for me. I think because of the music. Yeah. There's such good music in that in that film. And then it's just it. So much of it is about like chasing your dreams. Yeah. And believing in yourself. And so those are themes that things I want more of in my life. Like it, it kind of feeds my soul and waters that like desire to be better Mm -hmm. and to continue to give myself grace that even if I haven't achieved whatever, like that the journey is really beautiful and that movie is really beautiful. And so I, that's, that's a big one for me. I love that movie. Yeah. So for me, like my, I think, I think it really is just my favorite movie probably of all time. You've got mail. Oh yeah. I haven't seen it in years. I love that movie. It's just so, I think, I think part of it, it's the music Mm. and it's the setting. To Mm -hmm. me, the way that they captured New York, the way her apartment, Meg Ryan's apartment in that movie, like, that is like, I want to go to there. I just want, like, if they, if that apartment existed just as it is, for me to, like, go and have, like, an escape (laughs) every now and then, you know, like, Mm -hmm. that would be, like, a dream. Because I, it's just so perfect for me like I don't know it's just perfect and then the storyline is sweet I love Tom Hanks and Meg Ryan Mm -hmm. they are such a cute duo maybe one day they'll do one more one more you know it's funny that you brought that up because I think I feel the same like contemporary currently about like Ryan Gosling and Emma Stone you Mm -hmm. know there's just they have a chemistry between them that's very like it's lovely it's friendly and playful and I don't know maybe it's something that i want in relationship I think is Mm -hmm. that playfulness and that just cutesiness I guess like not taking life quite so seriously Mm -hmm. and also getting things done yeah sort of vibe yeah they were also in um crazy stupid love together Mm -hmm. that's another comfort movie for me it's just so funny yeah it's so funny and like watching the characters sort of exist I love this in films when characters are are, are like there's parallel storylines happening and then later they intersect with mm-hmm. some sort of like conflict or celebration at the end of it. Yeah. I find that really fun. Is that the one it might I may be way off. Is Steve Carell in that movie? Yes. He is in that movie? Yes, and Julianne okay. Moore. Okay, I love they're, her. They're married. And the okay. beginning of the movie, she tells him she wants a divorce and he jumps out of the car. Oh, <laughs> it's the very beginning of the film. <laughs> okay. And so then these two are navigating their relationship mm-hmm. and they have three children. Okay. And you see the two children that are still at home with them and how he's like got the kids on the weekend and yeah. the older boy is about 14 and he's falling in love with the babysitter and the babysitter's mm-hmm. too old for him. Yeah. And so like you've got all these little love stories that are happening. Yeah. And then Ryan Gosling is teaching Steve Carell how to step into his masculinity. Oh, kind of like a hitch situation almost? Kind of. Okay. Yeah, where he's teaching him, because Steve Carell married Julianne Moore's character. They like got pregnant with their oldest and got married at like 17 and 18 or Mm, something. Gotcha. You don't find that out until a little bit later in the film. But so Ryan Gosling's like, how many women have you been with? (laughs) And he's like, one. And he's like, I don't mean out of time. (laughs) You know, like, <laughs> it's a gag in the film, right? And he's like, no, really, one. And then Ryan Gosling's character's like, what? what? Yeah, yeah. And so he teaches him how to, like, pursue women and mm. go on dates. And then, you know, they're going through a divorce. So he steps out and explores things and mm. dates women. Mm-hmm. And over here, his 
enter, I'm guessing, the scene of the lady with the heels on the table? Yes. Okay, now I'm, now I'm yes. with you. Yes, <laughs> that's the first woman he takes home. Okay. <laughs> Turns out... That is the eighth grade son's English teacher. <gasps> oh, no, Steve. Oh, and no. Steve and Julianne end up in a parent conference with her. <laughs> oh, no. Okay, don't tell me Highly more. Highly entertaining. I need to, I need to watch that. You need to watch that. it. It's so funny. And, yeah. and so, like, all of these, like, love stories are happening, intersecting mm-hmm. with all of these characters. And then, yeah, it just keeps coming. Conflict, but funny conflict keeps happening. Yeah. And so it's just... And the, write, the writing's good. The, the acting's great. I mean, it's Steve Carell, Julianne Moore... Ryan Gosling, Emma Stone, Marissa Tomei. Mm. I mean, it's just... That's a big cast. It's a great cast, yeah. Which, talking about Steve Carell, one movie, I have not watched it in a long time, but I loved it, was Dan in Real Life. Oh, I need to see that. I haven't seen it. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. He is just one of the most endearing actors, I think. Mm -hmm. Like, he can be so goofy, but then so authentically real and like yes emotive and just Mm -hmm. like you feel like you can connect with him like whatever character he's playing and he does such a good job in that movie and you I think you would really like that one okay Dan in real life I write it down that's a good one I mean he's like that in crazy stupid love too it's just they're all so good and relatable yeah and it's I really like films too that are sort of morally gray Mm -hmm. where because all of us are to some extent, right? Like we make bad decisions, we make good decisions, and there's right. a mixture in between. And all of these characters are doing that. They're making yeah. mistakes. <laughs> They're figuring it out. Mm-hmm. And I, I find that really relatable. Well, yeah, because aren't we all? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Aren't we all? Aren't we all? Yeah. So You've Got Mail is is like your biggest one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's like my default if like nothing else sounds good, but I want something on Mm -hmm. if that's available somehow. I actually have that DVD in my laundry room because my laundry room, when we bought our house, came equipped with a little pull down DVD player screen. So if you're in there for a long haul, you can Uh watch a movie, I guess. I'm never in there long enough to do that, which tells you how great my laundry skills are. But it's sitting on the shelf in my laundry room. You've got mail. I'm trying to think typically film wise I don't really go to a film I go to shows okay so number one without a doubt is friends like I had a feeling you were gonna say that I mean like yeah. I I have seen every single episode more times than I can count to the point where when I see the episodes aired on Nick at Night you oh, know that's right yeah which is so insane because <laughs> I came from the days where it was Dick Van Dyke and I Love Lucy and Bewitched. Happy Days and Bewitched and now apparently classic television is Friends <laughs> and that is just plain <laughs> scary yeah but it's to the point where I can finish a scene that they cut off because I know the extra because I have the DVDs and all that kind of stuff Mm -hmm. I can be like oh they forgot that line you know or like whatever but I you want to talk about being you know in the gray as far as morality goes there are things that are in that show that would not stand up now oh definitely yeah and Mm -hmm. that would get a lot of flack but I kind of love that because the characters and the actors themselves are so beloved and that show was so beloved that no one has torn it down you know or brought it down or yeah you know like it's like a time capsule it is like I'm, I'm know there's commentary about it but mm-hmm. it's not ever been enough to like cancel it right you know yeah there's enough good there when that show was in it's like major hype I was in like middle school Mm -hmm. and so my (laughs) it's funny now watching it because my mom would like walk through the living room and be like babe do you think you should be watching that show like yeah mom it's fine you know like it's not like I'm gonna go do what they're doing you know but watching that show and just not ever thinking about it I made a comment one day to my mom like well you know, one day when, like, I have a boyfriend and we're older and we're living together, blah, 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 blah. And she went, excuse me? I was like, what? She's like, baby, you don't live with your boyfriend. You you get married first. And I was like, huh? And it, I mean, I had totally been, my mm-hmm. thoughts had been, <laughs> had been formed by friends. Like, they all live together. But see, in my little innocent mind, because of the way I was raised in church, I wasn't going to have sex before marriage. 
I was just going to live with the guy. <laughs> I mean, yeah. That, I mean, that makes total sense from <laughs> Ashley's world from in middle Ashley's school. world. It totally in does. In middle school. Yeah. And so she was, I mean, she was like very like Ashley, you know, like. Oh, Protective okay. mama. Yeah. So that was kind of funny. But, you know, they talk about porn a lot on that show. There's even a whole episode I've, where I forgot about that. the yes. boys get free porn and, you know, yeah. and like that. I'm like, come on, y'all. But other than that, <laughs> yeah. like, I really love just, you know, I love it's just a freaking funny show. It and like funny. the characters are so good. Their relationships are so comfy. And I saw something recently, and I think I agree with it. <clears throat> Somebody said, you know, I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to continue watching Friends after Matthew Perry passed away. Mm -hmm. And the post was about how, but when I watch Friends, I see Chandler. And Chandler kind of makes me forget that Matthew Perry is gone. I just feel Chandler, you mm -hmm. know. And I kind of can see that because the few times that I've watched it since he passed away, it's just Chandler. Mm -hmm. You know, and and then it'll hit me and I'll go, dang, <laughs> yeah. you know, like that just breaks my heart. And I read something recently, too, and I don't I need to fact check this. But, you know, he and Julia Roberts dated oh. for a little while. Okay. She was on an episode uh -huh. of the show early on and they dated and then he broke up with her because he and his memoir, I guess, said that he felt this overwhelming like, how am I ever going to live up to Julia Roberts' standards? And I can't mm -hmm. stand the thought of her breaking up with me, so I'm just going to do it. Mm -hmm. And the post, and I'll fact check this, but the post said that when he passed away, that he passed away on her birthday. Oh. Which is kind of crazy. Because it's, I don't know, you know, they, people have tried to paint these, like, pictures could totally of, be a coincidence. It could. Mm -hmm. And they've tried to paint pictures <clears throat> of, like, unrequited love between him mm -hmm. and Courtney Cox and maybe him and Julia Roberts. And it's all mm -hmm. like, ugh. But... Anyway, I haven't read his memoir, but Lindsay, my friend that was on the show with us back closer to the holidays, read it and, you know, kind of through the lens of therapy and all of her experience and wisdom there, you know, she talked about just how troubled, how troubled, deeply troubled he was. And I think too, you know, when you're in, <clears throat> when you're fighting your own inner demons, a lot of times mm -hmm. those situations happen because you're you don't you don't feel adequate enough yeah. to and you admire this other person or this you know love interest you admire them so much and so deeply but when you're so troubled you don't want to put that on anybody else mm -hmm. you know and I, I feel like there he struggled a lot with yeah. those things and you know taking that on in a relationship is a lot mm -hmm. I'm thinking of Robert Downey Jr. at the Oscars you know, he thanked his wife basically for saving his life. And I don't mm -hmm. know how much of his story, you know, but she kind of did. I mean, he's been sober for a long time, but I'll never forget the first time I remember hearing his name. I was listening to Mix 107.3 and Michael Storm in the morning <laughs> was reporting on the fact that Robert Downey Jr. had been pulled over on the interstate in California for driving nude. And he was like... <laughs> High as a kite, yeah. right? Like he was mm -hmm. in a, he was in a bad way for a long time and he's since gotten sober. And mm -hmm. I mean, what a career since, right? Yeah, you know, he's done so much, which is another group of movies that I'll watch for comfort. And that's the Marvel films, mm -hmm. the first ones, like the more yeah. recent ones I haven't, I just haven't really gotten as into. I love the origin stories so much. I know, me too. That those are what I tend to go back to. Although I really do love the, like, what, what are the last two infinity war and end game? Mm hmm. Yeah, I really love that too. Again, just all those different storylines coming together mm -hmm. is something that I really. Yeah, I loved. I to. loved Iron Man in the beginning when that mm -hmm. first came out, and then Thor. Those were my favorites. And I did check. He actually, Matthew Perry, did actually pass away on Julia Roberts' birthday. Mm -hmm. Interesting, but yeah, yeah, I like those movies. We during COVID, Bradley and I, that was like our date night every night when we would get through the day of, you know, managing quarantine at home with three very small children. We'd put them to bed. We would door dash chips and salsa and queso. And we would, we would just went down the line and watch yeah. them all in order. And that was really fun. I watched them all in order <clears throat> while I was pretending to work mm -hmm. during that time. <laughs> I was just really struggling to focus and, you know, working from home and isolation and mm -hmm. was also door dashing things. Mm -hmm. And I, sat at my desk 
and watched those yeah. movies Aww. like in my desk chair like just over the tv kind of like yeah, you know it yeah. was supposed to be in the background but it was it the was thing. the foreground <laughs> It was it was an interesting time, but yeah, I did the same thing. I watched them in order mm-hmm. and loved it. Yeah, yeah, it's we just really such did too. great storytelling and acting, and I should probably give the newer ones a chance. Yeah, but yeah, and it's amazing to me how film can be such a like thing that just brings people together. It is an art form. You know, I think there's something in it that when it helps you connect to the human experience or helps you to connect to just something that you couldn't otherwise get your words around, there's just something so impactful about that. Bradley and I took a cinema class together at UT Tyler. Yeah? When we were there. He was, of course, in nursing. I was in education. But somehow we figured out two times how to get a class together. And one of them was, one class was about the history of rock. <laughs> That's cool. (laughs) And then the other, this other one was cinema. And so it was late at night. So, you know, we would watch a movie from like, I think it was like eight to 10. You'd go in and watch the the film and then you'd write a paper about it over Mm -hmm. the next week. And he actually texted me this morning and he was like, there's a new recreated Roadhouse movie. (laughs) Yes. Aaron asked me about it last night. So he Bradley was like, did you ever see the first one? And I was like, no. And so today he was like, do you want to tonight watch the first one? Such a man thing. And then we can watch the new one together. And I'm like, sure. And he was so cute. He's like, I'll make the popcorn. I'm like, okay, babe. (laughs) It's so funny. Aaron asked me yesterday. He said, have you seen the new Roadhouse movie yet? (laughs) And I said, no. <laughs> I have no idea what it, what they're about. So Aaron's really into like 80s masculinity movies. Uh-huh. This is one of them. Patrick okay. Swayze. Yes. The original yeah. one, which I love Patrick Swayze. Mm-hmm. But he plays this bouncer guy mm-hmm. at a bar. Mm-hmm. And he's like, no, I can't think of the character's name, but nobody messes with him. He's okay. not like the biggest, baddest dude. Yeah. But he just has that air. Yeah. <laughs> he has that air and he's he, he's like, you know decent fighter or whatever Mm -hmm. and he can shut down fights and so that's what you know they hire him to do but it's it's just so typical like (laughs) Sly Stallone Patrick Swayze like these just these 80s films that are like Mm -hmm. great music yeah (laughs) good looking dudes (laughs) but it's Mm -hmm. just like it's so masculine yeah and so I it doesn't Roadhouse doesn't do a whole lot for me. It's yeah. fine. I've watched it a lot because he'll turn it on. It's like his <laughs> it's one of his comfort movies. Okay. So when he asked me about it yesterday, I was like, eh, I mean, no, I'm probably not gonna watch that. <laughs> and he goes, Well, don't you like Jake Gyllenhaal? And I was like, Actually, not not really. And then mm-hmm. I said I walked around like the couch and looked him square in the eye and I said, But if Ryan Gosling or Ryan Reynolds are in a movie, <laughs> I'm there. I'm there. <laughs> I think it was Ryan Reynolds, and I forget which award show it was recently that mm-hmm. Shania Twain replaced. Okay, so you think you're Brad Pitt, and she said Ryan Reynolds. Yes, which I was like, oh, <laughs> poor Brad. Well, I love Ryan Reynolds. I've loved him mm-hmm. for a long time. Another comfort movie for me is The Proposal with he and Sandra Bullock. That's a good one. It's a I great watched one. that the night that Bradley re- proposed. You did? Yeah, we watched that together. That was cute. Aww. So timely. Oh, yes, I, I watched that I've and played that. Taylor Swift. The Aww. knelt to the ground and pulled out a ring and said, "Marry me." Yeah, I was Aww. screaming that all night. Oh, that's so sweet. How old <laughs> were you? Fresh. I was twenty-one when he proposed. Aww. Gosh, just babies. Yeah, but that's so like those two things are so perfect at that age. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. I mean, that's just like if yeah. I was gonna write a film. You yeah. would be doing those things. Well, you in, know? in my Facebook status, and I had already thought about this, like I was waiting for him to propose so that I could make this my Facebook status. It was, he talked to my dad, I'll pick out a white, dra- white dress, it's a love story, and baby, I said yes. Aww. Isn't that precious? Aww. It is. It's so sweet. <laughs> How did he do it? Oh, I haven't told you this story. I you can think, well, actually, you can YouTube this. Really? Yep. You can YouTube Bradley Fisher, Ashley Walker proposal. It's still up there. But he proposed on January 9th, I think, of 2009. But his birthday is on the 12th of January. Okay. And so his mom had come to me and said, hey, why don't we plan a surprise party for Bradley? I said, okay. So 
I planned the party. I got the decorations, but it really was genius because it was the only way. Because I had told him, I want it to be a surprise, and I want our people to be there. That Mm -hmm. was important to me. So I was so distracted with, like, making sure that he got this lovely surprise that when we walked into the house, everybody goes, surprise! And I turned around, and he's on his knee. Oh, how precious. It is precious. <laughs> and it's I was really shocked. Sweet. And I I just kind of stood there and like took it in. And then he asked again. He asked twice. And then I just kind of shook my head and, you know, yeah. it was really cute. How but long did y'all date? We had been dating at that point for like three years. Mm-hmm. So by the time we got married, it was like three and a half years. Yeah. So, yeah, we were young. Because he asked me to be his girlfriend the night that I graduated high school. Aww. So then we got married on the Friday night before Thanksgiving week. Went on our honeymoon that week because we had that week off of school. Yeah. And then I went back and finished student teaching for a couple of weeks and then graduated. Aww. So we were that was babies. A busy semester for you. Listen. <clears throat> Planning a wedding and trying to graduate. Girl, did you do that on purpose? <laughs> Mm, you know we just tend to like to do things all the things all Mm -hmm. at once all the things all at once well I mean at 21 you got a lot more energy too but I you know and I was thinking about this the other day I did not know how to delegate at all at the time yeah and so I literally I still have this spiral notebook somewhere that has my lists Mm -hmm. of just things after things I did that I mean I planned that whole dang thing yeah and and then so much to the point where I, I didn't realize until like day of or day before, like, I don't have anybody tomorrow to like take over for me. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> when I talk to young brides now, especially, mm-hmm. I'm like, do you have a coordinator? And I'm beginning to say, I won't, I won't work with you unless you do, because otherwise it turns into the photographer yeah. being the coordinator or her trying to coordinate. Mm-hmm. And it's just, uh, and I'll tell them, you don't need that on the day of. Like, no. even if it's a friend, just get somebody yeah. that you can pass the, the point details person. off. Yeah. But, but yeah, that was a sweet time. How did Aaron propose? <laughs> Not like that. No? No, it was a surprise. I actually thought he was going to break up with me. What? Mm-hmm. It was a weird t- time. It was June of 2016. My grandmother's husband, my step-grandfather, had recently passed away. And I had a remote, both in like Marshall Longview area, the day he proposed. Did not know what was going to happen. He had a bass fishing tournament that weekend. And he had gone over the Friday night before for like a like a meeting to figure out who he's going to fish with. And that night, because I had an early morning remote in Marshall, I had driven to Gilmer to stay with my mom. So I wouldn't have to get up quite as early from Tyler and drive. So that whole night I was just like, Aaron's being weird. I don't know. Like, I don't know if we're ever going to get married. I don't know. Blah, 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 just grousing. Mm-hmm. And I just wasn't in a really good headspace because of all this. Like I had to be at work in Marshall of all places at TSTC. Mm-hmm. And then I had to come back and go to like a celebration of life event on the way back through Longview. <laughs> <clears throat> Yeah, it was weird. And yeah. this this remote was early. It was like 8 o'clock in the morning. Also yeah. kind of unusual. So early that Saturday morning, I'm in Marshall doing this thing, come back. Well, at the celebration of life, my dad's family is all there. And my uncle says something along the lines of like, I don't know, something about Aaron and I getting married. Mm-hmm. And my headspace, I'm like, I don't know if it'll ever happen or whatever. Well, I didn't know. Aaron had gone to talk to my dad the night before. Oh, my goodness. My uncle was letting the cat out of the bag, but I didn't catch it because I was in such a weird headspace. Went back to my mom's house after this, like took a nap again, like just not not happy. It was a day. It was not a good day. Yeah. Yeah, I was like, mom also knew. (laughs) <laughs> Don't know how she didn't give this away. She's my just, mom did too, and I swear I have no idea how she did it because yeah. I never thought she could keep yeah. that secret. Yeah, so it's just a really weird day. And then I drive home. Um, we were living together. We lived together mm-hmm. for probably about two years before he proposed. And he was asked me to come have a cocktail with him on the back porch, which we used to do kind of on a semi-regular basis. We'd just have a nice cocktail, watch the birds, yeah. and chill out there. And he sat me down and he said, I lied to you about where I was last night. Oh, my gosh. And your heart goes to you're like, this is how I'm going to end this day. (laughs) Yeah. And I was like, 
Okay. Okay. <laughs> so where were you? And he was like, I went to see your dad. And I was like, about? <laughs> you were <coughs> over it at this point. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And he was like, well, I stood across the front of the boat and I asked him for your hand in marriage. And I'm like looking at him like, what? <laughs> What's going on here? And he was like, I told him that I'm madly in love with you and then I want you to be my wife. And then he opened the ring and it was the most perfect ring. It was the exact ring that I wanted. Like, mm. yeah, he did. He did really well. But I really like I, th- I thought like he was going to say you need to move out, like <laughs> find a place to live. Did you enjoy Bye. that cocktail? It's the last one you're going to yeah. have. <laughs> yeah. It was so weird. And then, I mean, of course, then it was really lovely and exciting. It was like. I think it was June 25th, maybe. Mm-hmm. So it was kind of a random. Yeah. It wasn't like any kind of holiday or something. That's sweet. But, you know, it's funny. People had told me, I hope I'm not divulging too much of his information here, but we dated for five years. Mm-hmm. And people told me, like, he doesn't make decisions quickly. This is probably going to take a minute. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And let's 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 hurry up. Chalk like, I'm, up, not, I'm not getting any younger here. <laughs> and... He had had a couple of media jobs before doing real estate, which he does now. And, you know, so we kind of understood each other's worlds in that way. I went through like maybe three job changes with him when we were dating. Mm -hmm. And after the last one, I was like, like, what do you really want to do? Mm -hmm. In college, I thought about real estate. I was like, dude, it takes like six weeks to get your license. Go get your license. Yeah. They did it. Mm -hmm. He got licensed in April and proposed in June. Aww. He found his fit. You yeah. Know? And a lot mm-hmm. of times people will say if a man doesn't feel like yep. secure, yeah. they won't. And I really think that he never told me that, but I really feel like that's probably what yeah. shaped a lot of his yeah. slow decision making there. I don't I'm think sure. it was about me. I think it was him feeling maybe insecure about like, mm-hmm. could he provide? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Will and, there be stability? And see, for Bradley, even though we were really young, I knew that I knew Bradley was going to be my husband at 17. I mean, I just did. And part of it was (laughs) the way that we got started. You know, he, we were like, he took me to my first high school dance. We didn't talk for a year. He was like, I was a horrible date. We need to go through this story at some point. But that homecoming date, I was horrible. So Bradley was so genuinely good like just I get he, that vibe from him he always has been that's mm-hmm. just who he is yeah I won't cry but that's just who he is and it was but it was off-putting at first because it was like he wasn't the bad boy he wasn't the bad boy <laughs> ain't nothing bad boy about this man so I was like in that phase of just like Ugh, like I don't want him but I didn't want anyone else to have him <laughs> Yeah, that's fair. (laughs) You know, Mm -hmm. and I remember going to bed one night and out loud, I said, oh, I would never marry Bradley Fisher. And I swear to you, Mandy, I felt, I felt it. As soon as you said it? I felt God just smile. And I went, I was 17 and I went, I just kind of looked up and went, no, 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 no. Okay. I'm going to just place that on the shelf because I'm 17 years old. Even I know that that's bonkers. And I just let it go. And then our story evolved. I'll have to tell our story at some point. But, you know, even though we were really young when we dated, and even though I knew at a really young age, like, this is the one, I knew better than to let him know that. (laughs) Than to be like, hey, by the way, (laughs) you're going to marry me. I just, I wanted it to be his decision. I wanted it to be on his terms. I never wanted him to feel like he got, well, you know, like roped into it somehow. Mm -hmm. But for Bradley, it wasn't so much the provision thing for him, like maybe it was for Aaron. It mm-hmm. was him waiting for the clouds to part and the neon sign to drop and for God himself to come down and say, this is the one that you are supposed to marry. Because he, it was such a big decision. Mm, that's fair. And It is a big decision. It's a huge decision. More people it's, should maybe wait for some I signs. Mean, it truly, <laughs> truly is, I would say, one of the top three most important decisions you will make in Mm -hmm. your life, who you marry. He always wanted to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. So he just wanted to be sure what the right thing was. And 
I remember because while we dated and as we were in college, like people would say, so when are you guys going to get married? You know, we were kind of in that phase where the young couples around us were quickly getting engaged and like getting married and now we're watching a lot of them get divorced but uh, not a lot of them but some of them it's been strange but you know but they would somebody would ask him like when are y'all gonna get married and he mm-hmm. would say oh I, I don't know about that and it would kill me I mean yeah. just break my heart into two and I remember one day I was on a walk with my mom and just kind of like God why won't he like commit and why won't he you know like because it just really was, it was just tearing me up. And I really remember this feeling of like, Ashley, when you're standing at the end of that aisle, do you want to stand there and look at somebody who I made go there or who wants to be there? Mm-hmm. And I was like, mm. okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so then it was like, but can you hurry it up? And so, but then from there, it was this process. I did finally have a conversation with Bradley where I broke down and I said, I need to know where we're going because if it's not headed to marriage, we got to like, it's going to rip my heart out, but we got to stop. We've got to end it because I can't go further. Mm -hmm. And so I tried asking for a proposal in this moment. I just need to know this is the direction we're heading. Exactly. And it wasn't, it was just like, we got to, we were at that place where it's like, we either got to Mm-hmm. go one way or the other had the same conversation with Aaron a couple of times it's I mean I just finally broke mm-hmm. and not knowing that like around that time he was having conversations with his parents soon after having conversations with my parents buying a ring all that kind of mm-hmm. stuff you know but for him it was this process of realizing like the clouds are not going to part and the neon sign is not going to drop and God's not going to necessarily say, this is the one. Mm-hmm. He's, he'll, he'll, the way Bradley tells it is that he was like, I feel like God says, these are the things that make a good wife. These are the things that, you know, you want to look for. And then it's like, there's this girl. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I mean, ultimately, it's your choice. He could have chosen to walk away. He could mm-hmm. have said, I'm too young. Or maybe I maybe there's somebody better out there, you know, like... That's the thing. Love is a choice. Mm -hmm. Love gets talked about so much as a feeling, and there are feelings that come with it, of course. But marriage and love is a daily choice. Mm -hmm. It's a verb. It's a verb. (laughs) It's an action. Mm -hmm. And and some days you don't feel it, Mm -mm. but you make the choice. Mm Mm-hmm. And then when you weather the the stormy parts or the the desert parts where you're like, oh, where where are the feelings? Mm-hmm. It you wind up realizing that you've just fought your way into an oasis where it's like, oh, that's what we were fighting for. Mm-hmm. You know, that it deepened it and it made it better. We showed up even when we didn't feel like it and we chose one another. I think that's what like Bradley and I have been learning over the last couple of years, like more so than ever before. We've been through lots of hard stuff in Mm -hmm. our marriage, lots of great stuff too. But in the hard stuff, we were always like good. Like the conflict was never really between he and I. And I won't even say that there's necessarily been conflict between us, but it's ruffled us a little bit more. And we've just found out like for real how making the choice to choose each other, how that hurts, <laughs> how it's mm-hmm. like, it's, it is like a whole new level of selflessness and like all of that, but we keep meeting back together and we keep forging forward and it mm-hmm. keeps showing up in like ways where we realize like, oh, this is just getting deeper and better. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I don't know how I got off on all that, but that's okay. We started with comfort movies and then told our own love stories. So it's relative. Yeah. Why not? (laughs) (laughs) I think, I think too, to your point, like we become mirrors for each other Mm -hmm. in our relationships and it can often be really difficult to look in the mirror. Yes. You know, whether it's the actual mirror and you're dealing with your own self or when you have your spouse that's being your mirror Mm -hmm. and it can really be tough because sometimes they're showing you parts of yourself that you're uncomfortable looking at. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and certainly dealt with plenty of that in my own. And it, it can be challenging, but I do think it, to your point, I do think 
the choice is always there and choosing to love someone even when it's uncomfortable is part of the process and it does make mm-hmm. it even more worthwhile when you have those really great moments yeah. where you're choosing each other at the same time mm-hmm. <laughs> you know yeah. because some days you it's not that way yeah some days you're choosing them when they're not choosing you for whatever reason mm-hmm. and those days can be really really tough but those are hard days but when you're choosing each other and it mm-hmm. becomes really apparent and those sparks are still there and, yeah. you know, the deeper love and friendship connection is there all at the same time. It really mm-hmm. does. It's like that oasis that you described. It really is worth it. Yeah. And it just, you know, it doesn't sound romantic to say that marriage is work, but it really is. You have to be intentional, you know, mm-hmm. and like Bradley and I got a few days away, you know, I got to go to uh, Maryland and DC Mm -hmm. for like a branding photo shoot. And in the middle of it all, he's with me and like helping be my, you know, second shooter, my, Hey, hold that up. So block the sun from her face guy. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But we got some time to like, remember, like we're a couple and it it started with us, you know, Mm -hmm. and like, it was just so nice to have those moments where it's like, oh, yeah, I really do like you a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not only do I love you, but I really do like you, you know? Yeah. So, but it, unlike these comfort movies that we watch that conflict get res- gets resolved in 25 minutes, <laughs> it's not that. Marriage is just no. not that, you know? And, uh, you know, like I said earlier, I'm we're starting to see couples – unfortunately around us that you know are not making it Mm -hmm. you know and and that's hard too and I think more than ever I'm at a place too where I recognize I used to blindly just be like all couples should stay together no matter what and I I don't ascribe to that (laughs) because sometimes situations are so unhealthy that unfortunately just like it takes two to choose one another in a marriage, like you have to have two, mm-hmm. you know, because if you don't, one person cannot make a, a marriage stand. Nope. So seeing that is, is hard, you know, yeah, it is, but it doesn't, ha- and it doesn't happen overnight, you no. know, and I think that's the sad thing is a lot of times from the outside looking in, you know, people can put on a brave face or you know, show up together for events or on Facebook or whatever, and you don't really know what's going on behind the scenes and how things are maybe unraveling or devolving. And it's a slow process sometimes, mm-hmm. little tiny things that just start to add up and snowball. But I think one of the things that I've sort of observed and learned over the last probably 10 years being with him and, and also just on this like personal growth journey that I've been on is that we all grow and evolve and change. Mm-hmm. Sometimes we grow and devolve and mm-hmm. change. Yeah. But it's like if you if you can't communicate through that process mm-hmm. of growth, mm-hmm. then that's where a lot of that conflict happens because like I am not the person that I was when I met him. Yeah. I am not the person that I was when I married him yep. seven years ago. Yep. And so sometimes that's that can cause conflict mm-hmm. because there's expectations for both of us Mm -hmm. around this idea of who we were when we came Mm -hmm. together, who we were when we married and who we would be now. Yes. And that, and that doesn't always line up. No, well, and often doesn't, but here's the thing. It's not going to for anybody. Right. Listen, (laughs) y'all, nobody who has been married for more than a little bit is married to the same person that they married on their wedding day. Mm -hmm. And what I heard recently, you know, I love The Basement by Tim Ross, and he talks about, he said, when you get married, you are vowing your forever, not to the person you see in front of you that day. You're promising your forever to the one that you don't see yet, the Mm -hmm. one that you haven't met yet. And he even like paralleled it with, you know, in sickness and health, in death and life, there will be within a marriage a lot of deaths of a person that we once were and a new life to this new person. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I am not at all the person that I was when we got married and neither is Bradley, but marriage is, is learning each new version and loving that version. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And that can be hard Mm -hmm. because when a person changes in a way that you weren't expecting You know, because none of us can predict how someone is going to change or how they're going to grow. Like when you choose to love that person, Mm -hmm. like that's a big thing. 
And I think the challenge would be, what's more challenging? Like growing and learning and shifting with someone who is learning and growing and shifting or learning and growing and shifting while someone else is not. That would be hard. Mm -hmm. Tough stuff. Yeah. Stuff to ponder for sure. Yeah. So. And also totally depicted in La La Land. <laughs> Completely. I need to watch that movie You really again. should. Because the latter half of the movie, you see growth in one character and you see another character mm. that chooses to stay the same and how that plays out. Yeah. So yeah. to make it full circle. Yeah. There we go. There you go. I think maybe the the episode title should be something like mo mo movie love versus reality love or something like that. Ooh, that's good. Yeah. I like that. We had a point to all this. <laughs> we did that on purpose. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> the Celebrating Women Podcast wants to hear from you. Email us a voice message to celebratingwomenpodcast at gmail.com. We would love to hear your story or the story of an incredible woman you know. Become part of the conversation on social media. Facebook.com slash Celebrating Women Podcast. On Instagram, search Celebrating Women Podcast. The Celebrating Women podcast has been presented by Hand and Stone Massage and Facial Spa in Tyler, Texas. Book your appointment today. Stop by the spa in Cumberland Shopping Center or online at handandstonetyler.com. The Celebrating Women podcast is created and hosted by Mandy Montana and Ashley Fisher. Support the show for as little as $3 per month at celebratingwomenpodcast.buzzsprout.com or visit our show notes. Thank you for listening, and don't forget to subscribe to the Celebrating Women podcast.